Okay. And then Exodus 19 says, Exodus was speaking. Okay, first year. It says, and in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day, came they into the wilderness of Sinai. The route. Not so far. And he dared them on. Ne? So, how long had they been going? Well, it says in the third month, the same day. It could be the first. It could be the first of the third month. So we said that they, they left Egypt, right, and they went through the Red Sea. They came into the wilderness, and we've spoken, we've actually only spoken about the water, which equals the new life. New life in Christ. Nee, you never live in Christus. But Jesus said, and Johannes was to uh, Evangelie van Johannes hoofdstuk 7 um, He said If any man will come to me and drink Out of his His belly In English it says belly Ek weet nie wat Afrikaans is Wat sê? Binnestek dat dit sê Sal Levende water Het vloei Ok Nou Die levende water Is die lewe Die nieuwe leven, wat Christus een persoon gee, wat om aanneem as een persoonlijke sal, salig maak. Weet jy hoe lekker is dit? Dit is een baie vlak woord daar, lekker. Nee, nee, dit is nie een mooi woord, dit is een vlak woord. Dit is nie, dit is lekker. Nee, dit is wonderlik. Lekker is dit, want een smarty is lekker. Maar dit is, dit is, dit is, dit is incredible om iemand te vind wat Jesus aangeneem het en om te aanskou hoe kom die levende water uit vir my is dit die lekkerste ding in die leven het is the nicest thing wie sê amen? amen. ja, ek wil so met trippel of rood water dit is true guys, you get to someone today um, yesterday, I went to see a uh, Portuguese guy near you. You know, he he brought by a broken angles. I can let Portuguese brought. He bought me, it should take away in the middle of fun for you. And he bought me, and I said, still on the other kind of funny phone. He said, Hello, Mr. Rene. How are you? He said, I'm fine near you. I said, Are you busy? He says, No, I'm not busy. Can we have some coffee? and take him up and do it so better can say, don't call him. I took an egg and said, friend with that, no man better than that. Come on, study one for two. And I'll sit down and say, and say, gebroke Engels. As they so fall from Jesus. We sit all so much, all three tranen in us, oor daar. And I'll verduidelik him, and I put my luister. Then is it this living water that comes out. And to bell him if, vir oogend, en sê, ek kon nie slaap nie. En ek het nou alles neergeskryf wat Jesus vir my gesê het in die aand. Toen op wat hierin stop ek daar. En, en nou, jy moet, die Engels is smart Engels. Jy kan het nie verstaan nie. Vat jy so'n rukkie dan verstaan nie. Maar, the most beautiful thoughts that was coming, he was, he was bubbling. Huh? That's living water. Ek hou van die liekie, jylle ken hom nie, dat is Afrikaans liekie wat ek ken, wat jylle nie ken. Jy is waarig om die boek te neem. Jylle ken hom, dan moet jylle hard sint aan. 
I'm just trying to help with something. <laughs> but let's say, um, uh, let's say, want, uh, want I eat ons met I bloed gekoop? Elk, elke en taal. Maak die saak wat jy is nie. Nou, dis die levende water. Dis die eerste principe wat ons geleer het. Nee. Guys, you're not saved till you've got living water. Are you listening? But no more listen. Uh, if, if, if I should die, then there's something you must remember. You're not saved till you've got living water. It doesn't matter if you know the Bible backwards, but if you can't wet someone with the gospel when he goes away there, <laughs> you can feel he's been wet. That's what it says there. And remember, Jesus was the rock that followed them through the wilderness. And it's that living water. And the, I'm telling you today, there's nothing more beautiful than living water. It's true, right? Eh? Please tell me. The following again, then was this the manna, it was the bread, ne? That's the Word of God. The Word of God has to be in the center of my life. Die woord van die Heere. Ons kan nie wink van die woord. Weet jy wat het sê in die boek Revelations? As jy een dingkie daar verander, gaan al die probleme van die boek in jou leven kom. Jy sal nie slaap as jy dit as jy dit verstaan. Huh? Daar was twee mens, twee uh, mans wat ek geken het, uh, by oor as ek. Uh, dit was drie broers, uh, van die kerk was dit daarvan. Die een wat ek geken, ek het twee geken, en ontboed en, en goed geken, een sakkie van die kerk was dit nou. So kort manniekie. Hy sê vir my, hulle was baie, baie stuk, die drie broers. Dis die ware story. En toe beg, Toe was hulle, ek, ek klink like my, hulle was seker 18 of 19, en toe besluit hulle nie, hulle moet nou soet wees. Toe besluit hulle gaan die bybel begin lees, toe begin hulle by openbaring. Hulle sê, hulle was so bang, hulle het op hulle knie gevang en haat aan die hulle gegeen. En al drie van hulle was in die bediening van die Heere. Nou, we cannot, ons kan nie van die woord van die Heere afgaan nie. Guys, that's the next thing if I die, before I'm finished with this journey through the wilderness. The Word of God, the Bible. Today, we're living in a world where people take the Bible and only believe what they want to believe. That's the sad part. They twist the Bible and they turn it until you can't even know it's the Bible anymore. All kinds of things are allowed. And it's between you and God, it's between me and God. We cannot change the Bible. That's what this, the manna was. And remember, you know what manna means? The definition of manna is, um, what is it? That's what it means. You can read. Manna means, what is it? But the record is gefaal, and to say, what is it? What is it? But the wahrheit is, mense wat nie Jesus ken nie, Die Bijbel vir hulle is precies die selle. Wat is dit? Hulle kan nie verstaan. Jy kan nie met een ongerede persoon redeneer oor die doktrines van die woord. Jy wil gaan baklein. En ba as jy wil baklein, maak seker hy is kleiner as jy. Nee. Jy kan nie. It's what is it? But the moment you give your heart to Jesus, you get the answer. And you begin to understand God's word. En as net, toe heb drie principe. Die eerste principe was, met die woord van die Heere, onthou, jy moes net manne vir vandag vat, jy mag nie manne vir, vir uh, moore wat vat, nee, so jy kan nie sê, dis wat moes is vir hulle gesê, en toe lees ek dit weer vanmiddag, volgend, jy sê, nevertheless, die Israelite het gesê, was moes is, ok, kom ons vat, dan kan ek moore laat slaan, and the Bible says, the manna stink, and it has worms. Now, you know what that tells us? My relationship with God has to be fresh. I can't use yesterday's testimony. 
Toen die mens het een 40 jaar oude een, soos ek vanavond, oor die koortje. 40 jaar terug, het ek die jaar hierin met my gevraag. En ek kan nie oor gister praat nie. En wat die Bible sê, if you've got an old testimony, it stinks and it's got worms. Verstaan ons wat ek sê? Ja. Verstaan die prinsiep? It's quite a challenge, isn't it? There's a challenge that. Oh yes, it's a challenge. It's a challenge, it's a challenge, it's a challenge. I can't preach last week's sermon if it was good. You tempted to do that. Yeah. If there's a good message and you think, I'm going to hear you in the next week. No, uh-uh. They shall stink. They shall burn. You must take a mark. You work on God for today. You got to be current with the word. The word's got to be living, new every day. Hey, is that beautiful? And then there was the other, the other principle was, and it's sick of word from your word. And now yeah, to bestet the chano deep fry. Now yeah, it says and they put it in a mill, and they try to change it. So for those of you who weren't here, they tried manna burgers. <laughs> Men of horse, the men of horse for our stock. Men of pasta. They try to do it. And you know what happened? God sent snakes. And it was biting them. And they said, Don't mess with my word. Love it as it is. And it was the mixed multitude. And don't you see last of them? The mixed multitude. Not. Not only uh, Israelites came out of Egypt, because they married themselves some Egyptians. This is more so. No. Your own Macy's be your dog, black, not me, my name. The others were up in my name. No, it's not that so. See, yeah. Now, what's the fuck with you from? Yeah, it's a pilot. This was a more so. Samson, you said, I put them from. And to come a little song. But the Bible said, the mixed multitude. Kept reminding them about the flesh pots in Egypt. The stew. Are you from a stew? Like a scarf stew. Huh? And they would sit there with a piece of manna in their hand and they'll say, What is it? <laughs> and the mixed mother said, Maar hoe dood het ons om een gip te was? Dat was lekker koos daar, man. Groot pot vlees. En, oh, dat was so lekker. En het aanhoudend na die wereld teruggekijk. And they said, Dinner in the world is very good. Huh? The devil said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and you know what happened? They got into trouble because the mixed multitude kept telling them, Egypt, go back to Egypt. Guys, you must get the Egyptians out of your life, man. Does this really remind me of this old lady who used to go to the prayer meeting and she used to pray, Lord, please take the cobwebs out of my life. The next prayer meeting. Lord, please take the cobwebs out of my way. It used to go on like this for years. Eventually the one guy said, Lord, please kill the spider. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mixed multitude in our lives. Are you longing back for the world? No, you come to church, you come to serve Jesus, but you keep looking over your shoulder, back in there. You can go back. You can go back there. But remember the taskmasters, the devil that is waiting, he's going to put you under the whip again. And if you're not under Jesus, you're under the whip. It doesn't matter if you're young or if you're old. That's how it is. And so they kept minding him and they kept saying to the, the mixed multitude, Do you not want manna? You don't want God's provision. You must go your own way. And then the snakes came and they bit them and they started dying. And the Lord Jesus, then Moses put up the snake on the and said, whoever looks can live. Whoever looks can live. Just a look. How's that? It's how simple it is to find Jesus. Just a look. Just one look of faith at Jesus. One look. Everyone that can look, can't we? From the youngest to the oldest. We just have one look and the poison had no more effect and they were healed. And so, tonight, tonight, if it Misschien het, het hier al, 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 al klaar met jou gepraat. Misschien weet jy, jy het nie water nie. Jy is maar bykie droog. Jy kan nie iemand nat maak met die ervaring van jou. 
Dat is niet één of twee druppelkies, dat is niet genoeg. Nie. Het moet immers wees. Dat is iemand die ondenkelijk maakt. Maak. Misschien, die Bijbel, je weet niet wanneer laatst jij gevoel het. Ah, hier dan, dat is beautiful. You must have it in your heart. You can't remember when last you said, God, your word causes me not to sleep. Hey? Like I'll tell you, we couldn't sleep last night. We had to write all the things down God was speaking out of the word. Guys, we've got to have that what makes serving Jesus beautiful, isn't it? Hey? Oh, goodness, there's so many beautiful stories. Um, just quickly. Um, the missionary came to our church one day from Papua New Guinea. His father's in our church. And um, they went there to this place, and these people, they, they had to start from scratch. The first people that went had to cut down the trees for a runway for the airplane. And the, the people that we know, the men who don't scan, they were the two of them that came, the most of us that runway. And they must be tall here, they must be able to learn to describe it, because it was not nooit near described. But anyway, long story short, long story short, these people eventually got sad, and they were barbarians, they would eat each other. Okay? They made, a, they made a, a little movie of what it was like when they got there. And you see this picture of the Oprah, the big bone in his nose? And um, this is a lesson to the woman. And his wife kept running away. So the first thing, this is a little of us. The first picture you see, she runs away, then he's hiding by the bush, he takes her off. On the head she falls over, he carries her back into the house. She runs away a second time, same thing. But no, movie gemaakt, so that us can see how great it is. He dared it here, bone arrow through the heart, through it. That's how wild they were. That's where they went to evangelize, those people. Klaar, wat nie nonsens nie. Nie so glimlach, die gene nou idee. Jy het een bus gekomen. Jy weet, jy krijg een puntje met haling, jy weet nie eens jy het een puntje. Maar, you know what happened to these guys? These people, they're very, they're very uh, rural. They, they got nothing. They sleep in these huts. The animals sleep in their huts with them. And around their neck, they have a bag with their most prized possessions. And it's really ridiculous. It's a bone of some animal or it's a, you know, you look at this and say, what rubbish. That was not all gered, so 30 of the village at Weet jy wat daar in is? Is dat net die evangelie van Johannes gehad, die Bijbel. Toe hulle hart aan die Heere gee, met alle ander goed uit, en brik hierdie sakkie wat hulle ronddra, is, is die Bijbel vir hulle. En uh, die, die man sê vir ons, hulle loop so, is daar so veel stress, hulle was so bang vir die ancestors, that they wouldn't walk uh, alone. So they would never work in the field alone. They'd work two or three, because they're scared the ancestors will come steal them. This is how they were going to die. And they had to the Lord to give them. They were the only tribe that was only in the field. They had the Bible here. And every time they stopped. And they had to take the Bible out. 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 This is manna. God's word. We've got to make sure that, that we are in love with God's word like that. Do you see what I mean? Don't bake it. Don't fry it. Don't use your intellect to try and sort it out. Take it as it is and allow God's word. These are the principles of going from here. We, we, we all want to get to, to, to uh, Canaan, eh? the promised land. We all want to get there. Because that speaks about spiritual maturity. That speaks about victory. Wait till we get here. You guys are going to be dancing around here when, I, when we finish over here. We want to get there. But you can't get there. There are, pre, there are prerequisites to get there. Everyone wants victory in Jesus. They all want victory. I've never met one guy who doesn't want the blessings that God has in his Bible. They want it all. They question when they don't have it. But when you say, whoa, how much water have you got? Yeah. So Ricky. And how much do you love the word? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do like the Bible. It's quite important. When I said you read it, um, where's my Bible now? <laughs> Anyone seen my Bible? 
might so help you, but and if you are like that, please don't be condemned. Because I'm saying it in love. I am. Because we've all been there. Not so. Some stage in our life. But tonight's a good night to fix it. Okay, have you got it? That was a summary. We all caught up. You caught up, eh? Could be 60 days. It's not long. How long did it take them to get to you there? How many? 40 years. It took them 40 years. Which means they made lots of U turns and circles. But it took them 60 days, not very long, and they got to a very important place. It was a mountain. Mountain of Sinai. The back, what's it in Afrikaans? Sinai. Okay? And out of this whole journey, out of everything God wanted to do, this was the most important place. What's here, Morris? Himself. After thinking, I believe. This then arrived at the most important place, plus minus, let's call it 60 days. That's a lot shorter than 40 years. It wasn't long after this that they sent the spies to go to the promised land to look. It wasn't long. Could have been a couple of weeks where they sent the spies. Remember? Twelve spies. They were divided up into ten plus two. Ten bad ones, two good ones. No, no. Yeah. Can I give you a question? Yeah. Had the Lord from Moses said to the kids to go to the land? Or had Moses said this out of his own? Ik weet niet waarom je zelf ons moet zeggen, wat het je gevindt. Moet je zeggen dat je het eigenlijk is? Is dat? Oké. Ja. Alright. Nee, ik heb nog nooit aan gedacht. Want, die Heer is almachtig en alwetend. Ja. Die Heer wil niet dat hij spul is waar hij liet, wat uit je gipte gekomen. Ja. Wat hij niet in kan doen gaat. Ja. Toen kon hij tien terug. Ja. Maar die boodschap is slecht. Ja. En toen zei die heren rijk, dan ga je naar terug. Toen sterven je hele geslacht van 2 miljoen mensen in de strijd. Ja, 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 wonder je, ik stem zo aan daar, ja. Dat is bijna een wonderlijke principe daarover, ja. Absoluut. Maar het was niet bijna lang, hier nou. Toen we naar oor gegaan, toen kom je terug. Kom eens zeggen, het was een... From here to in the spine, I'm going to have a look next week. It could have been six months. Or four months, because they were already here about 60 days. Okay? And then for the rest of the 40 years, they wandered around in the wilderness. They got, they got the message they were supposed to get, because this is what it was all about. But for 40 years, they wandered around in the wilderness. Why? What was the principle? Yeah, and, and I want to share with you from my heart tonight. Right? From my heart. I'm, I'm not... But what I'm going to say now could make you feel bad. But if you look around at people today, because our journey, if you love Jesus, we are journeying from the world, through the wilderness, to maturity. With God, where you can say you're a mature believer. Je is een volwassen christen. Want dat is waar ik wil gaan, waar wil je gaan? Hij moet ons als kinders toe die van gerades beginnen in die dorp. Hij gaat nooit bij Kanan uitkomen. Als wij ons bij die straat af en gaan, dan zeggen we, zien daar maar na. Hij gaat nooit, mensen zijn, hij zal nooit daar uitkomen. Dus moet niet lekker stoer nie, is dit. Je gaat met die dorp verlaat en de naam van andere in Lindley toe gaan, of zo iets. Is dit? Dit is de naam van je. Dit is de naam van je. But guys, we don't want to be known as those, do you? That's not going to get to spiritual maturity. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying from the bottom of my heart tonight, you know what the problem is? Too many Christians never enjoy the inheritance of Canaan. Huh? Too many. You know, Joshua, he was 18 years old, I think, when he got here. Uh, Caleb, Caleb. And Joshua started giving out the inheritance. That was his job. 
You know how, what he said? He said, you guys, this land is yours. Wherever the sole of your foot lands is yours. You know, Buddhists are here in As you know, me, me, no, say, God, so far as I can know, but I can pass, I can know for three days, so long to sleep on the earth. You can see a stock piece of cock, I say, lost my egg, look. I look my pass now, eight. So this is what they do, do, need. Eh? And you can say, that's what happened over here. They went to get an inheritance. And you know what I think Caleb said? He wanted the mountain, remember? Yeah. He said, give me this mountain, 80 years old. Give me this mountain. How big was his heart? It must have been a heart like this. Guys, that's where God wants to take us. He wants to take us to that inheritance. And this is near Almanique. Yeah. This will be harder. You can hear his blessing here. Okay? That's where we want. We don't get to maturity. Just like them. Many Christians, they go in circles and circles and circles because we don't learn what God is trying to say to us. It's got nothing to do with the church you're in. It's got nothing to do with anything else. It's just got to do with a relationship with Jesus Christ and how far you're prepared to go with Him. How far are you prepared to go with Him? You know how I feel tonight? Guys, I'm not stopping. I'm going with Jesus. That's how I feel. Pray for me tomorrow because I might not feel like that. Hey. But right now, I believe God wants us to enjoy that thought. I, want, I believe He wants everyone in this room to say, Jesus, all the way. I'm not stopping. The principle is this. There were 60 days into the journey. They already got to the place where God wanted them to get. Because this, was going to miskien a sal par, maander vat, as ons hier so adentig moet spreek. En dat is verskrikkelijk baie principe hier so by man Sanya. But this is what it was all about. They were there after 60 days. Let's call it another 60 days. If you go and look on the map, if you look in the back of your Bible, you'll see a map. They were, it was right near the promised land. Right, right near. So, 120 days, they could have been there. But the problem was, there was so much rubbish in their heart from Egypt. And they, wasn't, they weren't prepared to let go. They were listening to the mixed multitude who said, What funny stew. Can you understand what problem could create with stew? Can you? Yeah, you saw. Yeah, that's a salad, that's a stew. That's a so Mushi could make me bright He he came and he said, Oh, I'm so hungry, I'm going to die. Do you think he was going to die? I bet you he was like me at three hamburgers ahead. I bet you he was a big a duck a key man. Jacob said, Yeah, he come at But God was angry with him. He saw tried to repent. God said, You take my things lightly. You want to find repentance. These guys over here kept being reminded of Egypt. They couldn't get Egypt out of their minds, so they had to take 40 years. Guys, do you know what will happen? Do you know what will happen? If this group of people over here, if we can grab this principle of not taking 40 years to get there. This is the word. Yeah. God will use us to turn this place upside down. From here to Lindley to Rates. Believe me, this, this whole country needs Jesus, not just this place. They only, but it takes men and women who prepare to say, I'm, I'm going the whole way. And Lord, take Egypt out of me first. This is what God's put in my heart the last while. It doesn't need to take you forever to come to maturity for Jesus. We take too long. Speak for myself. I sometimes get angry. But then Lord, He says to me, don't worry. I'll restore the years of locusts have eaten. So even, as soon as you get to the point where He says, He says, He will give you that which you've lost. So otherwise we'd be depressed and our whippy and have to be sad. Okay. Let's say something about Sanya. Moses comes to Sinai. Hmm? 
What's up? And you can go to chapter 32. God calls him and says, Moses, you must come up the hill. I need to give you the plan. This is the hill of the plan. The mountain of the plan. Because in the book of Hebrews it says, Book van Hebreus, sê vir ons, God het vir Moses daar boog gesê, Maak seker, jy doen, jy bou die tabernakel, is dit die rechte woord, en maak seker, al die wette wat ek vir jou gee, maak seker, jy doen het precies, as ek vir jou sê, vir die plan wat ek jou gewaas het. So, saan jou is die plan, is die plan, het jy een plan? Ja, jy is een boos, jy het een goeie plan. Het jy een plan? Een Godse plan, levendig in jou hart, Mensen, maar ik challenge je, ik challenge je already, so by now you thoroughly dislike me. So let's put the cherry on the top. Guys, a Christian, when I say plan, I point to Marius, because we've shared this with you. If you don't know it by now, I can you have to <laughs> Every Christian should say, I know God's plan. I'm in the center of God's plan. God's plan is A, B, C, D, E. But most Christians I meet don't know God's plan. So how are you going to get to the promised land without the plan? Are you with me? But we're going to learn the plan, don't worry. We will learn the plan, it won't take long. But this was the mountain of the plan. And we're going to read in Hebrews next week. I don't want to do that now, I want to share something else tonight about the plan. But guess what happens? It goes up the hill. These Egyptians, these Israelites, they mark me much. Because he goes up the hill, he's not gone for long, because he only went up there for 40 days. Eh? But while he's up there, so it couldn't have been more than 40 days. But you must remember what God had done already. He took them out of Egypt in a miraculous way. He drowned the Egyptian army. He gave them quails. He gave them manna. He gave them water out of a rock. Not so. They'd seen the miracles of God. Guys, so many miracle after miracle. The cloud followed them in the day. The pillar of fire followed them at night. At every time of the day or night, they observed the miracle of God. And imagine if we looked out the window here and we said, okay, God's not moving. Ah, oh, the pillar of fire is still there. <laughs> hey, come back, was with luck. That's how they lived. Not so. Ah, oh, standing still now. Okay. Let's come out. Aren't you at the God yet? The life was in the middle of a miracle all the time. God's presence was, was there. When they walked outside, it was there. The cloud was there. The pillar of fire was there. Day and night, God was there in a miraculous way. Man, I'm so happy tonight because he's still there in a miraculous way. He's there, guys. God is there. I'm seeing him clearer and clearer as the days go by. Just like that. But he goes up the hill. The cloud is still there. And they say, you can come here for Israel. We don't know what has happened to this Moses. That's what they say. We don't know where he is. Instead of someone saying, guys, forget about Moses, I still see the cloud. What do you think? Don't worry, Moses, will, the cloud is still there, which means God is somewhere. But the, 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 the unbelief, and, and this is just what happened is God needed this time, God had hierdie tijd nere gehad om hulle te wees wat in hulle harte is. Mense, luister vir my nou mooi, as dit blief, oom. En ander mense so kwaad waar ons nou nou traal. Oom, ons kan nergens gaan nie, tot ons ontdekkelijk kyk wat nie so aangaan. Is dit nie so? Ons moet by een plek in ons levens kom waar ons Goed kijk wat hier so afkomt. En ons dan moet het dan vir die Heere gee. Want die Heere was nou, hy so nou vir hulle wees wat daar binnen was. Moses gaan net een paar daar weg. To sê dat, come on, make us a God. Oh, make us a God. Out of gold. That we can say, this is the God that took you out of Egypt. 
And you know what? They all said, cool. If we read, and there was one oak who said, hurrah. It was a good story. But 20,000, if I'm not mistaken, that day, they went so mad that they, they bought a golden calf of all the ladies' earrings and bracelets. <coughs> and then they, they became so mixed up, they began to dance naked around them. Now guys, nakedness uh, is normally a bit of an embarrassing thing. Isn't it? Have you ever run out of the shower into a room and the windows open? <laughs> you dive under the bed at 40 seconds and see me get under the bed and pull the, wind, the curtains closed. Why? You don't like to be seen naked. Is it not so? But you know, when 20,000 people lose their inhibitions, because to walk around naked, you've got to lose all your inhibitions. What's it in Afrikaans? I said, please help me. Excuse? Inhibitions, yeah. You've got to lose, you've got to have no inhibitions to walk around naked. 20,000 walk around naked. They had no more inhibitions. They were utterly deceived. What God was showing them what was actually in their hearts. It's, it's wild, isn't it? You know what, guys? It's not what sin does. Sin makes you arrogant. You know it. If you, if you come to someone and say, um, who's not humble, you say to them, uh, whatever. Um, so you do this. You say, yeah, and so what? You're <laughs> judging me. Don't judge me, eh? I say, I'm in so proud. You must look for yourself. Yes, but. And I work for right this way. Because sin makes you lose your inhibitions. It makes you arrogant. I thought about this today. The Lord ministered to me. Do you know a Christian is never arrogant? He's always humble. Do you know a true Christian never fights? I fight when I'm weak, not when I'm strong. And you know that? I've said to you before. Whenever I fight with my wife, I've got to say, sorry, please put that off. That's recording. Okay? I've got to go and say, I'm sorry, my name. Because the Lord says, when you fight, you're weak. When you don't fight, then you're actually strong. But I lose my inhibitions when I'm weak. And I say, Yeah, fro! I call you a video base for our in Papua New Guinea. But so, you come and bang that. Yay! Mach me ma! And you go on and on. You lose your inhibitions. That's exactly what happened. I challenge us tonight. Guys, we need to be humble before God. Because when I'm humble, I know God's dealt with it. But I've actually got to. I must be prepared to look what's inside if I want to move on. Otherwise, I'll never move on. God needs to open up. And guys, life is terrible. Life throws curved balls. We've said it many times here. So we have all kinds of histories in our hearts and hurts that we're holding on to. Do you know you can never get to Canaan if you don't take those hurts to Jesus? Yes, I've told you. I've grown up in a very, very sheltered environment. But Jesus had, had to do that to me. I never abused substances. Maybe once in matric for about half an hour. God kept me from, from uh, all kinds of adultery and fornication by His grace only. My parents never mistreated each other or us. But it's amazing what I found is what God had to do in my life to get me to where He wanted me to be. But that's exactly what God was doing. He said, guys, let me show you what's in your hearts. And then Moses comes down. And the story gets worse. So he calls Aaron. You must he read it. This is where you realize God's got a sense of humor. Go read it. In English it says this. Moses says, okay, Aaron, what's it doing now, bro? He says, you won't believe it. The woman brought me the earrings. I threw it into the fire and I jumped the cough. <laughs> Come here. What an angel says. Yeah. As the angels bail, bail, uh, and he said with a straight face. Let me assure you, I'm going to get it. As you leave, I'm going to get one. Of you, can't so. You get a chance to ask him. What can he With a straight face, he tells Moses this foolproof story. How sin deceives. 
Is it not? Sin deceives God. I'm petrified of sin tonight. Lord Jesus, please help us to run a mile from sin. Because it's a deceptive thing. It makes me arrogant. It makes me... It removes my inhibitions. It deceives me. That's what... Uh, that's what... Um, that's what happened that day. What we had to learn. That's probably one of the hardest things in life. And, and the last year, this is what God's really shown me. Is we need to make sure that we've cleaned our hearts out. And tonight, I want to encourage every one of us here tonight. I really do. Friends, I've seen Jesus set people free in the last couple of months like I haven't seen in my life. I've seen God come to people, touch their hearts. Deep source. I've seen them come and bring them to Jesus and I've seen Jesus heal them. And these people are on their way to the promised land. But you've got to get to the place where you realize, me, you, everyone's got to get there, that you're no better than those Egyptians, Israelites. You will easily also tell a story like them, like Aaron. Threw in the gold, I popped this coin. As if you've got nothing to do with it. But I've got to come before God and say, Lord, here's my life. Moses came down. He went up again, remember? Because he broke the tablets. He was so cross. Broke the Ten Commandments. And God said, come back up. But he has a nice principle. Because Moses, Moses brought down the law, the event. And the event gebrak. Now, if you ask most people who haven't listened to the Bible studies in the past, why was the law given? The natural answer is to show us how to live. Because it says, thou shalt, thou shalt not. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. Not so. So, that's what we think the law was given for. But the reality is, even without the law, mankind knew what was wrong. It was Cain through Abel. How do you remember that? You mustn't drink too much Cain, you might kill your brother. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the only way I can remember that. <laughs> so, Cain through Abel. So, he kills his brother, he's walking in the garden, and the Lord says, Hey Cain, where's your brother? He says, No, my brother's keeper. It's a blatant lie in his head. Do you think if he knew it was wrong? If he didn't know it was wrong, he said, Oh no, I just killed him. He's over there in a shallow grave, you can see his toes sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> he deserved to die the oak. But he knew without a law that it was wrong. It was built into mankind. There's a silent kind of written law that you just know what's right or wrong. Huh? Even when kids steal, as I said to you before. First of all, teaching them to steal. They don't have to, you don't have to teach them to steal. But when they do steal, they do it so well. Have you noticed? <laughs> From a young age. Or put it all in their mouth. I heard a terrible story at Sunday school when I was this big. The guy was telling us the story, there's x-ray machines to x-ray when you've stolen sweets. I didn't steal for about two weeks. <laughs> because I thought, you know, if you swallow it, there's no more proof. <laughs> but it's amazing how the unwritten law so the law of Moses was not there to tell us how to live but I think they thought that because when Moses <coughs> came down the hill and we've shared this before they must probably said, brilliant Moses read us that law that we don't have to get into trouble anymore we don't have to make these golden calves okay begin reading thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all their heart and all their mind and all their soul and fresh in their mind was the golden calf. What do you think they thought? Ina. Well, that's a hard one. Okay. And the next one. Uh, and thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, that's hard. Especially when I look at some of you over here. 
You know, but your mother can love you people. You know, God, you expect. Okay, and the next one, thou shalt not steal. I can't remember the order. Thou shalt not bear fault with me. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not murder. Thou, eventually they said, Moses, no, please, stop reading. You have to bring something else from there that may be nicer to read. Something that reads a bit better, because this law doesn't read well. We step so. You see, the law came not to tell us how to live, but the law came to tell us how bad we were. It came to put a value to how bad you are. I've got these little aluminium coins I've got from Paul. I'm, I'll bring you some next week. They're very small. You've got to squint to read them. And on them is the Ten Commandments written. And you give them to someone, and they say, Oh, this is nice. What's this for? And then you say, Ten good reasons why you and I can't go to heaven. <laughs> that gets their attention. <laughs> and from there you can preach the gospel. Because those were ten good reasons why you and I can't go to heaven. That's the message. Moses came down here. <laughs> huh? I would have said, Moses, please we go back. Get something better. Because this is too hard for us. Wouldn't you have said that? That's exactly what it was meant to do. It was actually meant to make kind. mankind get so sick and tired of themselves that they look for another solution. And the other solution was Christ. Jesus Christ. Ah, that's why we love Jesus, don't we? Because the book of John, the gospel according to John says, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And guys, I love these hills. There's a couple of hills in the Bible. Who can think of them quickly? Mystic fast. The first hill was Mount Ararat. It was a significant hill, eh? It was a significant hill. You can actually look from hill to hill. Spiritually. And Mount Ararat told a beautiful story, didn't it? It told how God will save the world. It speaks about judgment. The ark, Mount Ararat, for those of you who don't remember, was the mountain that the ark rested on. You're right. That was a spoke about. And it was the most beautiful story. The next mountain has to be, where are we? Exodus. Yeah. The next mountain, as I say in, in Ge uh, Genesis, has to be Mount Moriah. That's where Abraham took Isaac. Maybe you can think of others and you must stop me. When I sing that song, I'm a new creation. No more in condemnation. Here, in the grace of God, I stand. I think when Isaac got off that altar, what do you think? I think you were singing that song. And I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of all that you have done. A joy that knows no limit. Here, in the grace of God, I stand. Because on that hill, God said to us, I'm going to send a lamb. His name is Jesus. The next hill was Moses' hill. It's not a very good hill. He held up the law. He said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have a good read. <laughs> What's that? Have a good read. Have a good read. The next hill was the Mount of Olives where the Lord Jesus was transfigured. Please go read that. Luke chapter 9. What a hill. Because there Jesus was with Peter, James and John. They were his closest disciples. And they were up to pray with Jesus and all of a sudden, guess who arrived? Elijah and Moses. And in, in the, I like the book of Luke because it says, it spoke to them concerning his decease, the way in which he was going to depart from this world. And then of course, the most beautiful hill, Calvary. It's a very different hill to this hill. Because that was the hill with the greatest message of hope. That's when Jesus came, <coughs> he came down from the hill, off the cross, rose again on the third day. He didn't come with like Moses with a big, with a big tablet of sand saying, "Look how bad you are." He, he came and he said, "Whoever believes on me is no longer bad." Who prayed that tonight? Donnie, you prayed that, didn't you? You said, "Lord, you took our past, our present, and our future sins." 
That's the grace of God. He does not condemn us tonight. But He says, if you'll come to me, I will make you clean. I will wash it all out. Of course, there's one last deal. The Bible speaks about Mount Zion. That's heaven. That's where we're going. But tonight, guys, this, this was the most important place. Because where the plan was unfolded. And I believe what God is saying to us tonight. Have you got rid of your golden calf yet? Or have you still got him there? A golden calf of hurt. A golden calf of my life's been too hard. You'll never understand. You won't understand. And this calf has got me bondage. You actually worship at the calf. Because whatever's got you, are you not really worshipping it? Under its spell? It's got you. You say, I can't let go of this. I've had too many things in my life that's gone wrong. It's like a little golden calf that I've got over there. You never thought of it like that, have you? Jesus wants to put, get rid of that golden calf. You know what they did to the golden calf? They ground it to powder. Remember, he made them drink it. Put in water, made them drink it. But they ground it to powder. And Jesus today doesn't condemn you. He doesn't throw the law in your face. He actually says, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by me. And if you'll come to me today, then we can start learning the true message, the true plan. We're beginning with a plan. I want you to come and give me everything, give everything over to me. Learn that principle. Empty yourself. No matter how big it is. No matter where you are. So that you can be free and you can move, you can move on to that promised land. It's grace and it's truth. It's grace because I don't deserve it. And it's truth because it will last forever. It is a given true fact that Jesus Christ saves and He heals. It's a true fact. That's the truth. You like that truth? Hey, I love that truth. He heals, He forgives, and He saves. Tonight. I think ek dink ons met een paar mee te gee uh, kom uh, in gebed met een paar mee te soos ons vir Jesus sê we bringing those, those issues to you